was your MP, and perhaps you shouldn't name mm. him no. or, or her. But... He's a good bloke, actually. I'm not, I've got nothing to say against him. But he, if anyone's going to stick their neck out, why aren't these people doing it? I mean, look, you know, we could go into their expenses claims and all sorts. Well, they've been, they've had the rug pulled out from one of them, haven't well, they? I wonder why that is. Perhaps. I wonder why that is, because right at the time where people are going to their MPs and, and pointing this out to them, and we are around the country, well, they're being discredited now. It won't be long before they're removed. Okay, there's, there's a question. I can't, I can't work out quite who this comes from, but it seems he says, or she says, it seems they want us to know now. It's all too blatant. It's as if the awakening is all part of the plan. Well, <laughs> right. Well, this is the sort of twist, the Mobius strip twist that I've referred to. Um, if you a Mobius were... strip, by the way, just for everyone who doesn't know, is a piece of paper twisted once, connected together, only has one side. So That's even though right. it's a two-sided piece of paper, you can put a pencil on it and pull the paper through and you cover every side of the paper. Exactly. It's an illusion. If you were in control of everything, then you are bound to be aware that at some point, particularly in, in a communication age like we have, that the public will wake up to the great scam. And so, therefore, you will prepare for it. I mean, I can confidently say that the, the awakening is not part of it. It's the last thing they want, but they did know it was going to happen. And believe me, they've managed, uh, they have put into place things to control and manage this. What, and such as? Well, the very process of the, the cynicists, as they call them, which go right back to the, the 20s and, and earlier, um, is to take whatever circumstances arise and make the best of them using disinformation. Um, there's no political angle to this. There is no politics, if, if anyone hasn't realised that yet. So they undermine <clears throat> the people who talk about these things? Yeah, if someone serious gets out there, talking about it rationally and actually making an impact... Like John Kennedy did. Like John Kennedy, then things will happen. If circumstances arise which they... you know, which are detrimental to them, they will use it. And the way they can do that in this information age is, is so simple. You know, there are lots of people who have got off their backsides, are sticking their necks out, are spending their own money you know, going bankrupt, whatever, throwing their lives into revealing something that the British public and the global public need to know, and then there's people out there who, just because of the internet or whatever, they think that, well, I'm sat here, I, I can't do anything, so I think I don't agree with what he said, so I'll slag him off. And they actually will finance these people. And, you know, I've proven this myself once or twice recently, that you have for want of a better word, defence intelligence guidance of those who haven't actually got a mind of their own. They can't put... So it's like rent-a-mob, isn't rent it? Yes, rent-a-goon, basically. They're, these people who don't actually have a mind or can't actually present their case. You know, I could argue a point with you. I could say all sorts of horrible things about you. Please do. But I'd rather sit here and, and if I disagreed with you, I'd rather say, well, I disagree because... I think this is it. And then you can discuss it. Not these people. They'll attack you because that's all they're capable of doing. Now, I know you've been attacked, haven't you? You've had threats made and certain things have happened to from, you. From, from all angles, Do you yeah. want to describe some of those events or not? Well, it, it's usually... Uh, <laughs> it depends how far back you want to go. Um, well, since you became a thorn in their side. Well, I was warned off originally, and, and I have to admit, I... I didn't really understand who or why or whatever. How did they warn you off originally? I was told to drop what I was investigating. By whom? I don't know. The person, st the person who did it re represented himself as a potential client of mine. So I drove up the A1 to a site. This is when I was building some. You met on the M1, manager. didn't you? The, oh, a on the A1. Was it North a Umberland. service station you met? No, no, no. I drove up the A1 to a plot of land oh, yeah. just off the A1 to meet this potential client, and we're discussing mortgage finance and so on. Um, and, of course, introductions were made, very canny guy. Um, and it just sort of went from there. He said, I'm not actually here to do that. I'm here to give you a warning. And it was like, well, how would you react? You know? Well, it's, it's, with it's surprise. Like surprise. Maybe, it's like, yes. uh. So what did he say with his warning? How serious was the warning? Drop it. Drop what you're investigating. And or, I said, well, what am I, what are you talking about, man? You know, I, I don't know what the hell you're on about. Um, 
And he said, the, the banking stuff. I mean, I'm not going to go word for word into it, but Why I... Not? Hmm? It's after <laughs> nine. Well, because it's after nine now, is it? It yeah. is. I still won't go into it. I told him exactly what you can bloody do with it, though. How come the swear words? Um, and said, you cannot talk to me like that, Did mate. he threaten you? This is a... He threatened my child at the time, yeah. Your child? Yeah. Um, who was very young then. Um, I said, you can't talk to me like that. He said, I'll talk to you any way I want to. So I felt very threatened and I was ready to sort Did of... Did he look like a military man? I said, I said who, who, who the hell do you think you are? He said, it doesn't matter who I am. Just drop what you're doing. Nothing more will be said. Da -da -da -da. So, I mean, it was shocking and I actually didn't even... I didn't tell anyone that, except my closest friends at the time. Um, I certainly didn't tell my wife or whatever, that was until years later. And I did actually drop out. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to keep my bloody head down now. Because, well, you know, it, it sort of comes from left field and it leaves you fielded. Later on, um, it talking about creating money out of nothing. We did decide, I and a few others did decide to use the system itself to raise funds, all right? And in the same way the bankers will create money out of nothing... You were doing a bit of that, were we you? We went down, I came down to London with others. There's only, there was at the time, and I've not, not looked at this since, but there was at the time only one agency, anyone wanting to do this financial transaction. And I, I can't go into the detail, it's boring and naff. But I had to go through this one agency, so I was sat in this posh office in Mayfair and was asked the question, right, before we do institute all this paperwork, a man sat behind the desk. Um, can I ask what, what you'll be using the money for? And we're looking to raise about three million. Well, <laughs> Mr. Naive here said, well, yeah, it's, it's, once we've got the money, we're going to publicise what's going on and blow the banking scam. Oh, big mistake. I think that probably was a bit naive. It was yeah. very naive, but that, that's the way it happened. So you didn't get me. the loan? It wasn't a loan, mate. We are going to create it out of nothing overnight. Um, just one of the secrets of the financial system. Now, you know what's going to happen now. Everybody who's watching this show will mm. be saying, well, mm, can you tell me how you do that? Well, the same way as the bankers do it. You, you raise an asset which has a value of, let's say, I don't know, £100,000, only overnight. You need someone to back this for you. You get the asset and then you trade on that asset ten times over, repay the loan that you got to buy the asset and keep the rest. So we're going for about £3 million. Well, why, why didn't you do it again? Because hmm? there's only one agency through which you could do it. Well, you could have got a friend, I suppose, to do it, or...? You could do, but when it, it's basically a, an intelligence net operation. So from that time, it sort of became... Uh, you know, I, I changed my opinion of the world entirely at that point. This was, if I can put a date to it, um, 95, 96, I think. Um, so there are people who are doing this all the time, are they? Well... It's, it's like a sort of fractional reserve banking. I, I can't honestly say yes. I guess, I guess that there are, because I, I never went back and I never pursued this. It always struck me as a bit funny that we could actually go and create this money, but, you know, it, it is possible to do that. Um, quite honestly, that was the scariest moment for me, because it became obvious that there are powers out there who will stop anyone who susses the system from actually using it. Now, I guess if I'd been a, a rich, you know, a wealthy person going down and wanting to create funds overnight, then this agency would have taken its cut and I would have been cleared and, and so on and so forth. Um, it's not good. It's a netting operation. And my understanding was it was MI5 netting operation. Um, but these guys don't produce their ID cards, although he was very clear. And once again, I said, you can't speak to me like that. This is a free country. Oh, hold on, you're talking about yeah. the guy in the field again, are No, we? no, no, back This is on. the guy who asked you... Yeah, yeah. and uh, <coughs> uh, my this is, words When you say to netting him, operation, you mean like um, trying to catch criminals or something? Well, the, to stop anyone from actually sussing the system. You can't... I, I can't claim to know the detail of that. But I don't know what visits, happened beyond you, where it. Where you live now, you've had visits. The, I have the odd harassment, yeah. Um, you know, one or two friends have seen it, you know, people sat outside. You, I, I'm not paranoid. I won't get paranoid about this. Um, I've had the years where you sort of worry, you've had the threats and so on. 